Welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, last time we left y'all off, we were talking everything college football playoff, talking about the predictions, talking about why was it uh, Michigan didn't want any smoke with Bama, uh, why <laughs> Bama deserved to be in, why Florida State didn't. Well, at least that wasn't my pitch, but you remember what I'm talking about. Uh, but welcome back, man. Glad to be back. We got some exciting stuff to talk about with y'all. How you living, bro? Sir. Doing good, man. Uh, I think everything kind of shaped out how we expected it to with the college football playoff. For the most part, I definitely think Florida State, they ain't need to play in them games. Uh, who else was a big disappointment? Uh, who did Oregon play? Oregon played Liberty. Liberty. And destroyed those boys. It wasn't even a – it was like a kid, a adult whooping on a kid. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think everything panned out how we expected it to. What's your take on it? Man, to be honest, first and foremost – Maryland got the dub. They went out there Absolutely. and smacked around Auburn, bro. It was Roll what? Terps. Bro, facts. <laughs> it was 31-13. Um, some of the other Big Ten teams didn't do as well against the SEC, which I think that's kind of disappointing. But, mm-hmm. one, we won our matchup. That's, that's what matters first and foremost to us. And then the Big Ten got it done in the playoff where it really matters, right? Like, mm-hmm. folks want to talk about Ohio State losing and only putting up three points. Nobody cares, bro. They didn't play their quarterback. Marvin Harrison Jr. Yeah. didn't play. Um, at the end of the day, bro, we got it done with Billy Edwards and and uh, Cam Edge at quarterback. Yeah. So, uh, bro, one thing I'll say, I was impressed with both of their play. Like, And what, what really gave me confidence going into the future, and we got the transfer MJ Morris coming in from NC State, too, to compete. But Loxley was not afraid to let both of them boys sling the rock. Yeah, literally. Uh, that's, I mean, that, that just tells you what type of confidence he has in them, right? I mean, you know, mm-hmm. you can come out there and be conservative, run the ball, let him be get going slowly. Both of their first passing plays were bombs. Yeah. And Ed ended up completing his too. So it's like you had to love what you saw. Billy Edwards want to be Billy Tebow the way he was running <laughs> that rock, but it was good to see them Where did get he go dub, to? man. He transferred in, right? He came from like Wake Forest or something like that? Yeah, yeah, Wake Forest. Wake okay. Forest. Okay. That's crazy. Yeah, good for him, man. I, I, I'm excited to see who wins the quarterback battle for next for next year because that's really going we, – we play a lot of different teams. The schedule is going to look a lot different next year, so it's going to be interesting to see who wins that quarterback battle for sure coming out that room. No, nah, fact, bro, the, the quarterback situation is going to be really interesting, and at least right now we have a glimmer of hope with all three guys, right? Like MJ played this a couple games this year at NC State before – he ended up redshirting mm-hmm. and preserving that year. So, no matter who, no matter who starts, we're not starting from like square one with you know someone yeah. who can't compete. Um, and that's that's the biggest thing. So, Maryland got the dub, man. Uh, we needed that going into the offseason. We finished with what eight wins, three straight bowl three straight. wins. The program is headed in the right direction. Like you know, I, I, lo- I know Loxy keeps saying the best is ahead. That's like his slogan. And this year was disappointing. We talked about it ad nauseum uh, all season long. All At the season. end of the day, man, eight wins are eight wins. Uh, you finish with the SEC win. You, you got to be happy where we're at moving into to next year. Yeah. You know, next year they don't even play. They don't play Michigan. They don't play Ohio State. They don't play none of the heavy hitters in the Big Ten. They play Penn State last game of the season. But I think they do play Oregon for sure, and they play USC. So I'm like – you you mess around, you could be undefeated going into play Penn State, and you we're not going we're not going to get too ahead of ourselves. But next year the schedule is looking promising from my perspective. We'll, <laughs> hey, we'll we'll get there when we get there, man. Right for right now, we we leaving with a dub, and that we call it like we That's see. That's all we can do. Facts. Yeah, bro. But so all right, so like I said last time we were on here with the with the Wisconsin crew, we were talking about these these playoff games. First playoff game of the day, man. Bama went in there, and all that talk yes. about the SEC this, SEC that, undisputed Kings. The commissioner went out there before the SEC championship and said, you can never leave our team out, yada, yada, yada. What'd they go out there and do? Man, Michigan. Catch an Mich- L. <laughs> Bro, Michigan gave it to him. And the craziest part about it is besides the the muff punt, by the by the uh the freshman returner in the first quarter that gave Bama their first touchdown. They didn't really have much going. Like mm-hmm. Milrow got going in the run game, but what else did Bama do? Like he was sacked like six, seven times in the first yeah. half. Couldn't do nothing with Michigan's defense, bro. And then 
I don't I don't know if Michigan's offense like you know forgot they had to play in the second half or what, but then that final drive they kicked it in. And it was like it was easy at that point. Overtime looked easy too. I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah, I don't know if who was the last dual threat for uh, Bama. It was uh, oh Bryce was kind of a dual threat, but like. He, I feel like Jalen is a different type of dual threat. I don't think Bama is built for his type of uh, his type of QB play. The prolific Bamas in history have had a perennial powerhouse at running back, and they got got like one to two studs at receiver. And I just don't think they had that package. <laughs> they had. I don't even know who the Bama running backs are this year. You know, so it's very interesting to see this different side of Bama. And I don't know. I don't see what changes. Is Jalen coming back, or is he hitting the league after this year? No, nah, I I think he's got to come back, even if he he does, you know, have the opportunity mm-hmm. to leave. I, I, think I think he has was, to too. I think this was his third year, but like like you said, like the 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 true dual threats that just doesn't suit Bama. Like even Jalen Hurts, they went to the Natty with him, went twice, mm-hmm. but then you know Tua came in and ended up winning them the Natty the second time mm-hmm. around. So it's like that guy just isn't the guy for Bama more often yeah. than not. And then like. Bama having a trash O line, like you don't you don't normally see that. Like you yeah. said, they normally yeah. have a a stout running back. They had some young guys who were talented, but they just didn't have that killer. And then their defense, mm-hmm. it ain't like the old Bama defenses, bro. Like Mm-mm. Minka Fitzpatrick, the freaking 6'5, 250 pound Dante Hightowers at linebacker, and an endless carousel of D linemen that are just sack after sack after sack. And they have they have Dallas Turner or had Dallas Turner because he said, bro, he got in a locker room. As soon as the game ended, first reporter talked to him, said, he said, no, I'm out of here. I'm, I'm gone. This, this is the last you're going to see of me. Bro, the instant he got in the locker room, like, he didn't even wow. see him. You know, like, you know, normally players are nice. They're like, you know, I'm going to evaluate the decision. <laughs> we just, he said, I'm gone, but keep just, the helmet. <laughs> hey, bro, we just lost the game. I'm going to, like, at least sit down That's wild. And, and let it unwind. Bro, he said, I'm out. He said, no, nah, this is the last you're going to see of me in college. And I mean, he's he's probably gonna be like a top top fifteen, maybe mm-hmm. top ten pick. I mean, dude is cold. Um, but just to see that happen, and obviously the way they lost sucked. Like that last play of the mm-hmm. game was terrible, bro. Yeah. I don't know. He, mm, I seen that joke. I was like, bruh, just a little more patience. Yeah, a little more patience. That he had a, he uh, had a hole. Oh my god, he had a lane. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he. Bro, but what's tough is is that that center had been snapping the ball super low like mm-hmm. all game. Uh, and I mean, once, once he probably had to pick it up off the ground, he probably just panicked because it was really yeah. an RPO and they had, they had the numbers to, to throw mm-hmm. it. Now, you know, obviously Milro being like a run first guy, he probably was going to run it no matter what, but yeah. now that, that's a tough way to end it. It was, it was, I kind of like it though. I like the fact that like, and I feel like this is the, the, like, the offspring of all the NIL and the transfers and stuff like that. Like you won't, I don't think we're really going to see like a dominant Georgia for three straight years or like a Bama just like coming. And it's like every year they're like, yeah, they're the ones. Cause guys can't are coming in. If they're not satisfied, they leave in or guys are coming in and going to schools where they get in that bag dropped on them, where you don't mm-hmm. see Bama have like a Rolodex of like the best dudes in the country, all at one school. People are kind of getting spread out type deal. And it's, a true testament to the college football playoff this year. And there's a lot of talent. There's a lot of good talent on different teams, which I feel like is just going to improve the level of competition overall across the whole college football landscape. So I like it personally. I do too, bro. It's, it's crazy too. Cause not only do you have to give them the bag to get them out of high school, at least, you know, the elite guys, mm-hmm. then you gotta, you gotta work to keep them. Like, it's not like yeah. you know back in the day where, once they're on your team, you're like, okay, they're only gonna transfer if, if something terrible happened. Yeah. No, but you gotta you basically gotta re-sign them boys every year. Hey, hey, I need more NIL. Hey, I need Literally. more playing time, or I'm gonna go over here to Texas. I love it. I it, love it too. I love it's it. It's cool, bro, because it's even in the landscape up, like you said, and like, man, next year when the playoff gets to 12 teams, and now you Ain't no walks in the park. Like you're not just Mm-mm. you're not just twelve and zero, and you're you're in the playoff and you're in the final four. Like, bro, you really got to earn it now. You got to earn those yeah. those those uh buys if you're the one through four team. And heck, who knows? I mean, like Liberty didn't show very well this year, but there's an automatic bid now for the the highest ranked group of five mm. team, bro. Mm-hmm. Let a let a USF or or a, like a Memphis go in there just twelve and zero, bro. Go go in there 12, 13 and zero and mess around and beat somebody. 
Yeah. It's going to change the game. And what my favorite part, I think, about the 12 team playoff, you know, b- before we get to the next uh, semifinal game, bro, the first round of games is on campus. Do mm. you know how turnt those campuses are going to be for these games? Mm. Bro, That's going to be crazy. Bro, imagine imagine a home playoff game at Tennessee, the stadium checkerboarded orange and white all the way around, 100, 105,000 people. Imagine a, a Penn State whiteout. Bro, those games are mm. going to be crazy. Yeah, those are going to be great games. It's it's going to be lit to see what they end up doing, man. I, I, I can't wait for that era of the playoff, but – the the first playoff game was great. I think the second playoff game was even better. Uh bro, yeah. bro. We talked about him all year. And I think if he didn't have that little like lull in the middle of the season where I think he I think they said he was kind of dealing with some injuries. Bro, Penix went out there yesterday and shut it down. He should have got that Heisman, man. I think he I wanted got it, that jump, bro. I for <laughs> After it, bro. that game, I was like, bro, he should have got that jump, bro. Cause he's out there throwing for like 490 90 yards on a cap. Him throwing for 400 yards is casual. That's a lot of people's season highs. And he Easy, just be out there bro. slinging that jump. Like it's crazy. He's a bro, very it, elite, elite quarterback. He he made passes where you're like, there's no way that's getting in there. And it would get in there with ease. Every yeah. deep ball dropping right in the bucket. I mean, you had Odunze went for 125. You had Polk went for 120-something. Mm-hmm. A bunch of other receivers who had 50, 60 yards. Bro, and, and they really started running the ball late, probably just to, you know, control the clock and, yeah. and finish the game out. Or he, or he probably hits 500. I mean, like, mm-hmm. let's be real. D- dude was dude had almost 300 at halftime. I mean, he yeah. was cooking, bro. And it was like he could, he could do no wrong. Then he starts running. I'm like, man, I ain't never seen Penix run the ball. <laughs> he, he did, bro. He did everything he wanted to in that game, and like Texas fought back, but that defense was terrible. <laughs> yeah, bro. Them, I ain't never really watched no big. I like I don't really watch uh, what you call it, um, Pac twelve or what you call it, Big Twelve football that much. But I was like, oh, okay, I see why the scores be so high. Them dudes, just, <laughs> they leave so much space, <laughs> bro. Like that's crazy. Out, out, bro. Out, out there, it's like they play. All right. If we score fifty, we'll still win. If we give up we'll thirty five, like that's <laughs> that's how it's gonna be. But dudes be getting drafted who play defense that's from those true. conferences still. So I don't know. So, something's working. Like maybe it's just because they're big and fast. I I don't know yeah. what the case is, but Lots that of film, game was I guess. crazy, bro. And like, okay, so I don't know if you peep game, but Texas had a returner, and I think he muffed it twice. I know he did at mm-hmm. least once. Mm-hmm. They had a kickoff returner. Who had a cast on one hand? That's he's from Brown away. He went to uh Damatha. He was at Bama and then he got he got he transferred to um oh, what you call it? He transferred to Texas. I forget it's like Brian Robinson or something is his name. But yeah, he had a cast on. I'm like, bro, why is your returner with a cast? What sense does that make? I don't care how good he is. Bro, I don't care if he was Dante Hall. You ain't, <laughs> you ain't catching a kickoff with one hand. Like, can and we then he please? grabbed that joint with one hand. He yeah. when he, when he muffed it, he went and picked it up with one hand. I'm like, I was like, oh lord, save this team, <laughs> bro. It's like it's like Texas just did enough to want to lose the game, and then then they really yeah. got spared at the end with the whole the running back hurts his foot and mm. they get like they didn't have any more timeouts left, but because because he got hurt. They ended up saving like 40 seconds at the end. That's the only reason they had an opportunity to drive down the field at the end, which, yeah. I mean, Washington shouldn't have let them get there. But I took, bro, I told my wife, I said, hey, look, I don't know. Like, I don't know what the injury was, but if I'm on Washington and he did that and we mess around and lost that game, I would have went <laughs> in the locker room and broke his other foot. Like, bro, you ain't hobble your butt off the field. You, yeah. bro, you know what time it is. They ain't have no timeouts left. I think the clock would have went down to like at most 12 seconds left in the game. Mm-hmm. And they would have had to punt, and they would have been punting, and they would have probably had the ball around the twenty some yard line. And then they ended up roughing the like roughing the uh, the kick returner or running into the kick returner. So they got another fifteen yard penalty, and they had forty seconds. So it's like yeah. it's like Washington wanted to add some drama to the game, but. I expected more from Sarkeesian too with, with his play call. And like he's he's known for being that guy on the the play call sheet. So especially in those last couple of plays, I was like, he gotta have something in his Rolodex to score this tud. Cause I was very because if they if they scored, then it was they win, right? Mm-hmm. Then Texas yeah, won, they, right? So they were yeah, Washington was up six at the end. So yeah, yeah they scored, get the field goes over. 
And in, in both games, there was a miss extra point, I believe, mm-hmm. that was like, all right, this is the when I seen both of those mixed extra points, I was like, yeah, this point is gonna be the most it's important point around. of the game. Yeah, and it did mm-hmm. both times. Every so, time, bro. Yeah, I I think I, it was a great game, and I definitely think Washington deserves to make it to the the national championship. But I got Michigan. <laughs> I think Michigan. Will, I, mean, I think Michigan go overpower them boys because Michigan's defense is very stout. They they don't have any guys that are like, oh, this dude is next level. But everybody just plays sound defense across the ball on Michigan's. Um, their defensive line is solid. That boy is getting hella penetration. Um, the nose was Bro, getting he's, some crazy. He's a dog. Yeah, he's, he's a dog. Absolute dog. <laughs> So Blay. like, like the the line is is Michigan minus four and a half, and like I think that's respectable. I, I get why it is right. Like their favorite, you know, yeah, yeah. Michigan's favorite four and mm. a half. So my caveat to all of that, and like I'm pretty sure in our like our prediction show, I picked I picked Michigan to win. I, I said mm-hmm. they were the safest bet. They were the most well rounded team, top to bottom. My two caveats to them winning is McCarthy. if they have a little. Like they did in the second half against Bama, like where they didn't, I think they didn't have a first down until that last touchdown mm-hmm. drive. Washington's gonna find a way to score. Like you're not, you're not stopping Washington for sixty minutes. You, yeah. at best, at best, you're keeping them from getting points, maybe for two drives in a row. Mm-hmm. The second part of that is they gotta find a way to get pressure on Penix because bro, Washington has the best O line in college football. They only gave up 11 sacks all season. Them yeah, boys, hey, them good. boys going to protect Penix, and then Penix yeah. going to dime you up with all them all them dang receivers. So it's like, play great defense all you want. Them DBs can only cover so long. That's if you don't true. get home, it's going to be trouble, bro, because <laughs> Penix can throw the ball way better than Milro, and he's throwing it to way better receivers. So mm-hmm. we're going to see what's happening. I, I don't want to change my initial prediction. I'll put it like this. I'll put it like this. I predict Michigan to win. Mm-hmm. I want Washington to win. If y'all watch the post game, my dog Michael Penix shouted out the crib Tampa and his his homie. <laughs> I forget buddy name, but he's, he's a true Tampa OG, bro. You heard him shout out the crib. Uh, I I want that for him. I think his career is is such a cool story. Like it's come full circle. Yeah, like, I want him. Yeah, I want him to win just off the strength of yeah, man, who he is and what he's been through. Exactly. That's a true Cinderella story, bro. Like to to overcome all the injuries, having to figure out if you're going to keep playing at all, going through a COVID season, which was so hard for so many dudes, going to Washington, deciding to come back to Washington because you know you had a chance to do something special. And then every step of the way, getting it done. Like I think they've won eight straight games by single digits, something, something crazy yeah. like that. Like they just find ways to win. And all they got to do is do it one more time. Uh, Bro, Houston's gonna be turned too. By the way, like, yeah, city. You rock with Houston. I rock with Houston. <laughs> I wish I could go to the game. I already city know gonna it's be gonna stupid. be stupid. I think I fly back on Friday. I'm like, yeah, I know the city gonna be swole this whole weekend. Bro, traffic, mm. traffic gonna be terrible. I'm not touching the streets. I'm either on a bicycle or I'm on two feet. I ain't getting in no vehicle. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'll be in traffic bro. until next Tuesday. <laughs> nah, literally, bro. Houston traffic is one of the worst, and that city is so dang big. But all right, so it who do you think's gonna like... be the player of the game? Who do you think's gonna bro. be the player of the game for? You think Penix gonna take it? I, I think Penix takes it. I think he finds some way to like, I don't, I just don't have enough faith in McCarthy to play a complete game. And I think at some point they're going to need him to throw. Also, bro, that boy Trice, the defensive end for Washington is a problem. Like he Mm -hmm. was, he was everywhere in the, in the game against Texas. Like he was in the backfield getting sacks, forcing fumbles on hustle plays, running 10, 15 Mm -hmm. yards down the field. Like you don't get you don't get guys with that motor like that's that Max Crosby vibe like of a guy who just will not be denied. So yeah. you know, I think he'll make some impact plays. I don't think they can stop Michael Penix, bro. Like I think he goes crazy again. It may not be four hundred and thirty yards. It might be mm-hmm. three eighty five. Either way, you got Odunze on one side. You got Polk. You got McMillan. I don't care if the running backs hurt or not. Those couple <laughs> dudes right there, they gonna cook and. Washington going to do something crazy. You know who I was really enjoying watching? Byron Murphy. The D, the I think he's a tackle for 
for Texas. He was mm-hmm. slicing and dicing boy. them boys up. Oh my God. He was he's elite. I'm I'm excited to see him play at the next level because he was making it just look so easy. Swim moves, uh, uh, getting through. Um his team didn't come out on top, but I know he's I think he was the Big Ten defensive player of mm-hmm. the year or Big Twelve. So yeah. he's gonna be prolific. He'll definitely be a top ten guy for sure. Nah, fact, bro, him and Sweat, they had probably the nastiest D tackle duo in the league. Mm. And then then you got the the fire nose tackle from Michigan. He's cold. You got Trice at DN from Washington. But there's elite talent all over the field yeah. in the playoff. And like getting to see dudes play in big that's another thing that's gonna be cool about the the 12 team playoff is now you're gonna have way less opt outs because you're gonna have 12 teams playing in these games. Yeah, that's very games. true. Or you're gonna have you're gonna have first round NFL talent all over the place, mm-hmm. game after game after game for, for three, four weeks in a row, and every game's going to get bigger. Like, it's a lot to look forward to, bro. Like, Monday's going to be a, a great culmination of the four-team playoff. Like, I think the whole playoff system has has been an improvement overall from the BCS computer mode. Like, you'll get number <laughs> one playing number seven in the national championship. Like, bro, what happened to two through six? At yeah. least this way, there's some people who are always going to be mad but at least this mm-hmm. way you're playing for it, right? So yeah. for that, it, it it definitely means a lot more. And then we get to 12-team playoff. Every single game is going to be heavyweight fight. And there's, I'm telling you, I bet in year one of the 12 team, some underdog team who's- Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. 10th, 11th seed going to beat somebody they're not supposed to beat. And everyone's going to be like, I told you that's, that's mm-hmm. why we needed this playoff. And- mm-hmm. It's good for the sport, bro. More it's money for December, more money December for everybody. Madness. What? <laughs> what? What you, you got score? Score for, score for the game on Monday. I got 45-35. Mm. Michigan. Mm. Ten, 10 point dub for Michigan. All right. So I got I'm, 10 I'm, Michigan beating them by 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like I said, I think I really do think Michigan is gonna win because I think they're a better team. But I'm going I'm to give the score for what I want it to be. And I, I be doing that all the time, but it is what it is. <laughs> hey, it's our show. We get to make the rules, right? We make so the rules. I'm going to go I'm gonna go. Washington wins fourth quarter drive by Penix. Game-winning touchdown to Odunze. They win 32-28, 31-28. Yeah, 31-28 makes more sense. 31-28. Uh... Mike finds a way to get it done, rides off into the sunset. Legendary, <laughs> le- legendary game, bro. It's, it's going to be lit regardless, but I'm going to go with that. That's very specific. That must have came to you in a dream or something. <laughs> <laughs> I might got to put a ticket in off that one. <laughs> hey, 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 did you hear what he said? We got to. Did you write? I'm taking notes. <laughs> send that one into the bookie. That's plus, plus 10 million on that one. Hey, if Literally. it hits, just, just let me hold a dollar. If it hits, just let me hold 100%, a dollar. 100%. I got you. <laughs> Yeah, man, bro. It's I look I look forward to Monday. I, I'm excited. Like obviously we got the the last week of the NFL coming up, but you know the Natty is is where it's at. Everyone's eyes gonna mm-hmm. be in, on Houston on Monday. Um, but man, it's it's been great. Obviously, we we culminated our first full season here, uh, talking yes, Terps football and college football playoff, everything college sports. I, I speak for myself and Ike. We had a, a great time doing it. We look Absolutely. forward to bringing bringing a lot more new, exciting, and, and different type of content uh, to the table. So, uh, so, you know, appreciate you guys sticking with us. Stay tuned, and uh, more's coming soon. Peace Until out. Until next time. Appreciate y'all.